machine learning systems in consequence have consumed a mountain of data, a vast amount of data, to the point where essentially we are running out in the sense that we are running up against the limits of useful information scrapable from the public internet. So the problem fundamentally here is we're running out of data because there is only one internet. But is this actually true? In some sense, there are two internets. There's the surface web, the publicly scrapable portion of the internet, and then there's the private web. The private web is the portion of the internet that is only accessible through access controls, right? the walled off portion of the internet, if you will. And this is where I would argue the most interesting data lives. Things like health records, email, financial documents, sensitive data live on the private web. It's estimated that the amount of data in the private web is two orders of magnitude greater than that on the surface web. But the data, all this data on the private web is largely unusable for machine learning purposes. And the reason is essentially a security related one. Let me explain by way of example. All right. Let's suppose that somebody is training a health diagnostics model and training it on or fine tuning it on electronic health records. Alice has an electronic health record that she would like to provide for the purposes of training this model. The problem she is naturally going to run into in most cases is that most web servers don't support general purpose, secure third-party data sharing. Now, there's no easy way for Alice to relay her electronic health record to the entity that's training this model unless there's some kind of pre-existing relationship between her health provider and this entity in general. And so this doesn't quite work. What Alice can do, of course, is just download her electronic health record and then upload it to the training environment. But if she does that, two problems ensue. First, there's the problem of privacy. Alice is sending it into this environment, but she has no idea whether her electronic record will be protected there. Second problem is one of integrity. Whoever is training this model wants to know that the electronic health records it's ingesting are authentic. They actually come from real healthcare providers. But if users are just uploading documents, there's no such assurance. And so we have these two security problems. How can we address them? This is where blockchain technology can be helpful, and not just in a blockchain context, in a general sense. If we plug in an Oracle, and in particular a confidential Oracle system, like Town Crier or confidential HTTPS in the CRE as introduced yesterday, then we can ensure that the electronic health record Alice is providing is authentic, hasn't been fabricated, hasn't been tampered with, and Alice can do things like privacy preserving filtering of her electronic health record, can release only the data she wants to release. All of this can be done with no modification to existing web servers. This is the beauty of confidential Oracle systems. Alice gets other privacy protections as well, and there are other integrity properties here that I don't have time to get into. This idea, generally speaking, I refer to, or we refer to as props or protected pipelines. The idea is that Using the confidential Oracle system combined with other privacy preserving systems like trusted execution environments to do model training, we end up with a full end to end security perimeter so that the integrity and privacy of the data being ingested by the system are protected from the time that they're sourced through the time they're used and beyond potentially. Well, this setup I've shown you looks a lot like the Chainlink runtime environment, the CRE, with two features involved. Confidential HTTPS to source Alice's data, again, from a modified web server. And this is based on Town Crier or Deco, as Sergey mentioned yesterday. And confidential compute 
a protected environment to do the model training or fine tune. So to summarize the benefits you get here in using props for model training, there's an explicit step involving consent of the user, consent by the user. Alice is the one who logs in and grabs her electronic health record in order to relay it to the entity training the model. We get this property of data authenticity. The provider knows that the EHR came from an authentic healthcare provider. And we have the form of confidentiality or forms of confidentiality that I described. Basically, Alice's records go directly into the training environment. And once the model's trained, her records can, her electronic health record can be deleted. And again, no modification is required to existing infrastructure. So that's the benefit of props for model training. Props can also be used for inference. For example, suppose that somebody is selling a token, can only sell it to accredited investors, investors who have the financial resources to incur the risk that this offering may involve. Well, what props can do then is ingest financial records from trustworthy sources, financial institutions, the, uh, the IRS. Right? Uh, Alice can, for instance, provide a transcript of her tax filings. And an LLM can process these documents and determine whether Alice is indeed an accredited investor. All of this, again, can happen within a security perimeter, the security perimeter defined by the prop or props. Exactly this setup we have, in fact, implemented, fully implemented in a demo, which my colleague Philip uh, will come up and describe to you, go through it step by step so you understand exactly how the system works and what security assurances it provides.